This year, Veterans Day marks a solemn anniversary. 100 years ago, the armistice ended the fighting of World War I, and this brought great joy to Mayo Clinic because countless staff provided care to ill and wounded soldiers on the Western Front. Today, we invite you to tag along as we travel across the Rochester campus to learn how Mayo Clinic was involved in the conflict. And we'll start with a familiar face right here at Heritage Hall. So let's go. Hi, Matt. Excellent. Good morning. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. A pleasure. So Matt is the director of Heritage Hall, and uh, so tell us a little bit about how Mayo Clinic did get involved in World War I. Axel, this is a great story of patriotic service to the nation and a global worldview. Even before the war started, and before America entered the war, we were doing military preparation to help medical staff be well prepared to serve troops overseas. And the whole war experience launched what is now a strong commitment at Mayo Clinic to work with the military to provide care to veterans and service members and their families and to work with the Defense Department. And we're here at Heritage Hall. There are some artifacts that you can point out that point to mm -hmm. the history with uh, World War I. Would you mind showing us some of those? Sure. Here we see a nurse who's from, from St. Mary's Hospital, who served in France in World War I, and she received high honors from the French government. And that transcends directly to the flag from the angel tent in Iraq that was given to us by Dr. Franz. And so the First World War really launched our ongoing commitment to serve service members and veterans. Matt, what was the result of the conversations between Dr. Will and Harry Harwick? Those conversations were transformative. From their time together, Dr. Will realized very selflessly that he and Dr. Charlie must give away the clinic to ensure his future. So a few months after the war ended, the Mayo signed a deed of gift, and we see that right here. The ink will they would have used, they and their, the Mayo brothers and their spouses signed this deed of gift that donated the building, land, equipment and the life savings of the family to endow Mayo Clinic as a not-for-profit organization focused on education, practice, and research. So the Mayo Clinic that we know today resulted from those conversations in the First World War. Wow. Matt, you showed us some great artifacts here, but this is just the beginning, I understand. There are other uh, things to find out here at Mayo Clinic. There are amazing artifacts all over the campus, Axel. I would recommend that you see Sister Lauren at St. Mary's and Renee Ziemer in the historical suite. They will show you even more information about this important time in our history. All right, we'll go there next. Thank you, Matt. Take care, Axel. We're now over at the St. Mary's campus, and we're joined by Sister Lauren Winant, who is the archivist for the St. Mary's archives. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for coming. And uh, you have been around for a while. Sister Lauren is 97 years young, and that means you actually know some of the nurses that served in World War I. Can you share us uh, share about that? Oh, yes. One was Florence Bullard. And she's the one on and this she's, photo here? She's this uh, one right here. And she was the first American nurse to receive the bronze medal from the French government. And this is the, the medal that she received the bar, and this is her graduation pin from the School of Nursing, and this is a copy of the citation from France. The next part of our journey brings us right here to the Plummer Building. This building is, of course, full of history, and one of the items you can check out is this bronze tablet on the wall right here behind me. It recalls how the American Legion and President Roosevelt honored the Mayo Brothers for their care of veterans as part of their contributions to medicine. But even more than that, you deserve the nation's thanks for the national service that you have rendered throughout your lives. All right, we're now on the third floor of the Plumber Building. We're in the boardroom of the historical suite here, and with us is Renee Ziemer. <laughs> she oversees the Mayo Archives. <laughs> Renee, thanks for taking some time with us. Yes. And already, what's behind the wall here? Uh, lots of uh, yeah. awards and acknowledgements? Right. These are all honors and awards given to Dr. Will and Dr. Charlie um, for their military uh, involvement and their service to our country. Uh, these are uh, their military hats. This would be Dr. Will's. Dr. Will and Charlie really expected to go over to France and serve their country over there, um, but our government had other um, ideas, um, so they actually advised the Surgeon General of the Army, Gorgas, at the time. So they were stationed in Washington, D.C., and then they rotated that duty. So they would go spend two months there, one of them would. Okay. The other would be here at Mayo Clinic taking care of business and then they'd rotate. And it was easy for the two brothers to do because they thought so much alike. It was an easy um, way to pass the baton, so sure. to say. <laughs> All right, 
we are way on top of the Plummer Building, the 20th floor with Austin Ferguson, the uh, current Mayo Clinic Carolyn Noor. Hello. And of course, we're right here uh, underneath the bells of the Carillon. Austin, uh, tell us a little bit about the significance of uh, this place in relation to World War I. Uh, well, you know, both Mayo brothers actually served in World War I in the Medical Corps. Uh, and this instrument from its conception in about 1925 uh, was intended to be a war memorial. Every concert begins with America or My Country Tis of Thee to keep that dedication uh, alive. Mm -hmm. 